Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I just wanted to do a sit down video and explain to you why I eat the way that I do and share my journey of how I got here. So by no means am I telling you that you should eat a certain way. I just think that um, sharing our own journeys can be really helpful for other people. So when somebody tells you that they're vegan, that doesn't actually tell you anything about what they eat. All that does is tell you what they don't eat. So vegans don't eat meat, dairy, honey, eggs, anything that comes from an animal. There are just as many ways to be vegan as there are to not be vegan. So being vegan doesn't necessarily mean that you're healthy. So to start my story, um, in January 2015 is when I decided to adopt a plant-based diet. It was right after watching the film Forks Over Knives where I learned that um, the most contributing factor for our lifestyle illnesses is our food choices. So it kind of blew my mind and I really wanted to change my diet and it's kind of weird because I had never ever thought about diet before. I'd never thought about the food that I was eating ever in my whole life and this is actually the way that a lot of people live. They don't think about what they put into their body. They just eat what they were told to eat growing up and they never question it. However, I think that we should question it because if you think about it, these huge industries like the meat, the dairy, the pharmaceutical and the medical industries, they do not benefit financially by us being healthy. So they're not going to promote us to eat these plant-based foods because they are not going to make money if we are not sick. So when I decided to go plant-based, I did some research and the number one tip that people would give was to educate yourself because this information is not mainstream. You have to dig a little deeper and I did. I watched videos, I read books, and I got into the ethical side of veganism as well, which was a game changer for me and my main reason for eating the way that I do. This video is not going to be about ethics though, it's going to be more about the health journey. So the things that I was eating initially were the vegan versions of my favorites. So I would eat mock meats, mock cheeses, and a lot of processed vegan food. And I think that those transition foods are actually really beneficial for people transitioning to this lifestyle because our taste buds are accustomed to the foods we've been eating forever. So I was eating a standard diet and I needed those foods um, to help me along my journey. So in 2018, we have so many options for vegan junk food. You can be a vegan who eats nothing but Oreos, chips, cola, and fast food burgers if you want to but that's not healthy obviously we all know that and I knew in the back of my mind that the optimal diet was a whole food plant-based diet that is what all the doctors recommend and it is the only diet that's been shown to reverse heart disease so I knew I wanted to get to that point so I just started incorporating more whole plant foods into my diet and less of the oil and processed foods. So a whole food diet includes things like vegetables, fruits, whole grains, potatoes, legumes, nuts and seeds. So the standard American diet is comprised of over 50% processed food and over 30% animal products. So if you can go from that to a whole food plant-based diet, that is an immense change in your diet. And that is the diet that so many doctors recommend, a whole food plant-based diet. You hear it over and over again. So I just wanted to touch on the reason why I don't follow a raw food diet. So a raw food diet is a diet where you don't cook your food. So you're just eating raw food, so that eliminates things like beans and rice and potatoes. And I think a raw food diet is excellent in the way that it makes you eat a lot of whole plant foods. But for me personally, I don't think a raw food diet is extremely sustainable. Fruits and vegetables are the most calorie dilute foods that you can find. So in order to get your adequate amount of calories, what I find is a lot of raw foodists have to add oil, which is not a whole food, or they have to blend their food, which I don't know how natural that is either. 
So I know that it works for some people, but for me, I don't have time to be eating uh, for six hours a day. And I personally don't see the harm in eating some cooked foods like grains and other starches and beans. For example, the Okinawans in Japan, they're a blue zone population, so they have a high percentage of centenarians, people who live over 100, and their diet is comprised of over 70% sweet potatoes. So I knew that a whole foods plant-based diet was the way to go, but for me, I wanted more um, rules to follow, some guidelines. I knew that there was more specifics to it. So that's when I picked up the book, The Starch Solution by John McDougall. The Starch Solution is an extremely satisfying diet. It's very inexpensive and it's uh, really easy to integrate this diet into um, your everyday life. So basically the Starch Solution diet, you are eating the majority of your calories from starch. So things like grains and tubers, rice, quinoa, potatoes, and he allows you to eat beans and lots of vegetables, fruits. He's pretty lenient about salt and sugar. As long as you're putting it on your healthy food, you're gonna eat more of that healthy food. So it's just a really easy whole foods diet to follow. And I know a lot of people are successful on this diet. So one thing that Dr. McDougall has on his side is he has the evidence that eating this way is super health promoting and you can live free of chronic diseases. We have the Asians who lived off of rice, uh, Incas who lived off of potatoes, and the Aztecs who lived off of corn. So like I said, I really enjoyed Dr. McDougall's diet, but um, I just kept doing more research and then I found out about Dr. Furman who wrote the Eat to Live book, which is the nutritarian diet and that's the diet that I follow today. So the starch solution and the nutritarian diet are similar in the way that they are promoting a whole foods plant-based diet and they do recommend a lot of the same foods. However, in the nutritarian diet, your focus is not on starch, your focus is on high nutrient, low calorie foods. So your plate will be um, mostly green and yellow vegetables and then yes, you can still have some starch. Um, there's a big focus on beans and if you watch some of my other videos, you know a lot about what Dr. Furman recommends. So as soon as I switched to this diet, I did notice some improvements in my health. And I think it's because Dr. Furman has such an emphasis on eating green vegetables, which I didn't find McDougal um, so much. And as soon as you start eating more green vegetables, it improves everything in your health, your skin, um, your energy, your digestion. That was just like the biggest thing for me. And now I actually crave the taste of kale and other greens. I just find them extremely delicious. So in my opinion, Dr. Furman's diet is a little bit more of a privileged diet. You have to be able to access a lot of raw fruits and vegetables. And we don't have long lived populations who followed fully nutritarian diet because the starches are the cheapest foods. That's the reason why they followed a starch diet. But if you've read the Eat to Live book, you'll know that Dr. Furman says that this way of eating will maximally extend your lifespan, it will prevent diseases, and it will provide you with excellent health. And you just have to look at Furman right now. He's 64 years old and how healthy does he look eating this way? There's also a nutritarian woman's health study that's happening right now where they're studying a group of women and seeing how uh, eating this way will prevent breast cancer and other diseases. So that will be really interesting when that data comes out. So like I said, I love eating a nutritarian diet. Do I eat nutritarian 100% of the time? No, I don't. Sometimes I don't have time in the day to eat a massive salad or if I'm going out to a barbecue um, and I have a veggie burger or I'll have a beer, I just, I don't let it derail me. It's what you do the majority of the time that's the most important. And if you can cook at home um, most of the time, that's really, really helpful. So I'm gonna be forever grateful for these plant-based doctors who have taught me so much about nutrition and it's really, really changed my life for the better, which is why I wanna share it with you guys and hopefully give you some tips about how to eat a healthier plant-based diet. So I really hope you guys enjoy 
enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching it till the end and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.